Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hey everyone. In today's podcast episode, we're going to talk about how to overcome trust issues. We're also going to dive deep into where they actually come from. And I will share with you three in-depth tips on how to trust again. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Simona, certified life coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we get into my three key steps that will help you overcome trust issues, I want to start off this episode by answering one very important question. Where do trust issues actually come from? There are lots of reasons why we may develop trust issues, but most of them stem from experiencing some sort of betrayal growing up. Of course, there are also many cases in which trust issues form later on in life, after experiencing lying, cheating, or being hurt by someone close to us. While trust issues may be a valid way to protect ourselves, and in many cases they may have helped us keep our sanity or our hearts safe, not being able to trust others in the long run is not something that's going to be beneficial for you. So let's dig a little deeper. Where do trust issues come from? Two of the core reasons for having trust issues are actually fear of abandonment and fear of betrayal. Both of them may have something to do with early traumatic experiences caused by absent or manipulative parents or primary caretakers. In the case of developing fear of abandonment growing up, it usually happens when we fear that our caretakers will leave us or they simply don't pay enough attention to us. It may have something to do with the death of a parent or someone who constantly works and has no time for us. Now, as far as fear of betrayal goes, it's closely related to fear of abandonment. Here's how it all happens. When we're young, our primary caretakers are our entire world. We look up to them, and ideally, they provide us with love, support, and affection. But when they do something that deeply hurts us, such as not keeping their promises, lying to us, or using us, they betray our trust. To someone who's five years old, that's simply unacceptable. And what do we do? We shut down and promise that we'll never trust anyone ever again. When you feel betrayal as an adult, that can show up in one of the following forms. You may be suspicious of everyone's intentions. You may expect the worst from people. Or you may try to control everyone and everything to avoid the pain of being hurt again. These control freak tendencies can even turn into an obsession if you don't pay close attention to them. Now that we know where trust issues come from, let's get into my first tip on how to deal with them. Become aware of your triggers. One of the first things I help my clients with when it comes to overcoming trust issues is learning how to develop self-awareness. Self-awareness is all about becoming aware of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors by giving yourself some space to process them. Now, in the case of having trust issues, you can trust people. So your trigger is probably a situation where you feel threatened, suspicious, or jealous. Let's take a closer look at two fictitious scenarios. Let's say you have trust issues when it comes to your friends, so you keep a safe distance and don't like to share personal things with them. Let's say you're having a coffee with one of them and they ask you about your relationship, but instead of giving them an honest answer, you start having thoughts like, why are they asking me about my relationship? It's none of their business. Maybe they're jealous that I'm happy, or maybe they want to learn some gossip so they can talk about me behind my back. Here's another example of a trigger when it comes to having trust issues in relationships. Let's say you've been with your partner for a few years now, but you keep feeling anxious that they're going to betray you in some way. Maybe they've lied to you one or two times in the past and you're worried that they're going to do it again, but this time it's going to be about something more serious. So you keep being suspicious every time they're not picking their phone when they're out with friends or if they suddenly stop sharing what's happening at work with you. You may have thoughts like, I knew it. They're just like all the others. I'll never trust anyone ever again. Now, I'm going to say something very important, and I want you to pay close attention to it. All trust issues stem from the following core belief. When I get close to people, they will hurt me and let me down. I'll repeat that again. When I get close to people, they will hurt me and let me down. So when you get into a triggering situation, your mind starts spiraling into all of these fictitious scenarios where you get betrayed, and you let your imagination go wild without any evidence. What you can do instead before reacting 
is become aware of the trigger next time you feel anxious, jealous, or overwhelmed. Slow down for a second. Watch out for these triggering thoughts and see what's really going on inside. I've made a free downloadable cheat sheet that will help you with that. It's called the Automatic Thought Record Tool, and it helps you track the link between your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, so that you can reframe your mindset and start trusting again. You can download your free copy by clicking the first link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash thought record tool. After you've learned where your trust issues come from and you've become aware of your triggers, it's time for the second step, which is to forgive the person who hurt you the most. This is such a deep and broad topic, and I'm going to barely scratch the surface in this episode, but I truly think that the only way to start trusting people again is to forgive the person who betrayed you the most. If you're having trust issues, but you're not sure where they're coming from, here are some journaling questions that may help you go back in time and maybe remember some things that you've tried to suppress to protect yourself. I want to warn you that if you're suffering from mental illness, depression, or have experienced abuse in the past, these questions may trigger you. So if that's the case, please skip the upcoming 30 seconds or so and continue the episode from there. Here's the exercise and the journaling questions to help you figure out the exact moment your trust was broken for the very first time. I want you to close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths and try to go back to a memory growing up where you felt betrayed by a parent, relative, or primary caretaker. Try to remember as much as you can by answering the following questions. Where were you? Who was there? What did they say or do? How did you feel at the time? Did you express your feelings or kept them inside? Do you have a distinct memory of a promise that you made to yourself, such as, I'm never going to trust anyone ever again? Can you imagine going back to that mini version of you and give them a hug or tell them something encouraging about the future? Something like, hey, it's going to be okay. I've got you. You have nothing to worry about. It's over now. Breathe deeply. And if you have any pent-up emotions, let them out without judging yourself. Now, I want you to slowly open your eyes and come back to the present moment. Did you manage to remember the exact situation or was it a bit more difficult to grasp? If you couldn't, don't worry. Sometimes it takes a while to remember these things and you should never force yourself to work through trauma especially on your own. Forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about you. The exercise I shared with you is just the first step towards forgiveness because you can't forgive someone if you don't properly work through your past trauma first. In some cases, you may need to work with a therapist, so be patient with yourself and explore your options. The important thing is to realize that by forgiving someone, you are not saying, what you did to me was okay and I accept it. You're simply saying, okay, this happened, but I'm ready to move on and not let it define my entire life. So give yourself some time and space, reflect on the situation and find a way to let it go so you can go back to the present moment and not let it ruin your current relationships. If you often struggle with racing thoughts, make sure to watch my video on how to deal with anxiety and obsessive thinking by visiting youtube.com slash coachsimona. My next tip is to give people the benefit of the doubt. Now, that's easier said than done, right? And it's definitely not something that's going to happen overnight. But I want you to be open to this new idea. Not everyone is out there to get you. Not everyone is going to hurt you. And most certainly, not everyone is going to betray you. So next time you start suspecting someone, or you feel like you need to control everything because otherwise it wouldn't get done, remember this simple mantra. I trust you, and I let go of control. You don't need to say it. Just remember it in your mind and give it a try. I recommend paraphrasing it so it feels more natural to you. The important thing is to start seeing the circumstances and other people from a brand new angle. One that is not burdened by the past. Now, if you've listened to this podcast before, you know that I'm not a fan of sugarcoating things. So here is the brutal truth. Will some people betray you, even if you give them the benefit of the doubt? Yes. But is it going to be worth it? The answer is again, yes. Why? 
Because if you don't give them the benefit of the doubt, you will keep your heart closed and not let yourself experience all the beautiful things that come from being vulnerable, such as love, affection, happiness, intimacy, and joy. The truth is that you can't have the cake and eat it too. You have to choose. If you want to live openly and have a fulfilling relationship with your partner or an authentic friendship, you need to let them in. You need to let go of control. And most importantly, you need to trust yourself. And here comes the kicker. For some of you, lack of trust in others may have something to do with not trusting yourself. Not trusting your instincts, your gut feeling, your own body. If you think that is the case for you, make sure to listen to episode 128 on how to trust yourself. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love and I'll talk to you in the next one.